Right, let's see if I can make a quick video about round robin and something I've been playing with in Ableton Live. First up, apologies because I know it's been a while since I... No, that's a ridiculous thing to say. I'm going to say apologies because it's been a while since I last made a video. As if you're hanging on my every video and that's incredibly egotistical, so let's ditch that. No apologies, forget that. Also, Clint Eastwood said apologising was a sign of weakness. Although, pretty sure that was old and outdated and it's probably best not to take advice from cowboys. And he was only in character when he said it. Anyway, Ableton Live 11. Now, you've probably seen me on Ableton Live Lite, if you've watched any of my videos at all. In the past, I've been playing around with Live Lite, because I had this kind of... Well, I can do it on 8 channels and 128 cells in the drum rack, down here. It's not exactly a limitation, so I can do whatever I want within Live Lite, and I don't need Live Suite. And then I started playing around with Max for Live. And I needed Live Suite. So I bought Live Suite. And I bought a push. And I went on some workshops. And I did lots of things in Ableton that I could probably have done a long time ago. But never actually got around to learning. So. 2021 is the year of embracing Ableton. Apparently. All of that to say probably going to get a lot more Ableton videos from me. Especially now that I've figured out I can use OBS and just record things in real time, which makes post-editing much easier. So I'm recording in the voiceover and the beat through the Motu uh, M2, which has a loopback, which is a beautiful thing. Feel free to ask me questions about that. I don't know any of the answers, but it's fine. So round robin. What's round robin? Okay, so round robin is a method of controlling multiple samples with one hit. Uh, what does that mean? So, if you so see this sequence here, so I've got a top sequence, I'm just going to solo that. This is a sequence of drums. Kind of crunchy. To be perfectly honest, I kind of made it along the lines of the sort of chocolate industries um, what was sort of referred to as like the IDM end of hip hop, but people don't like to acknowledge that. But yeah, it's if you're thinking of um, maybe Funksturung or uh, push button objects, Edgar, a great example. Loads of other people around that time doing really interesting things. The, the Victor Vaughan album on Sound Inc. and a lot of the Heat Sensor, King Honey, people like that, making the sort of borderline between electronica and hip-hop where those sounds are kind of arriving so this kit's sort of with that in mind anyway i digress so we've got on these hits here we've got the kick and it just has i've just got one hit for the kick percussion hats and snares i have got a drum synth kick but that's tuned to basically provide the bass tone so just to if you see that there that's tuned to c and you'll see why in a minute so that gives me that nice bass tone, and that sits underneath the organic kick, uh, which has a little bit of a filter on. So, but that's only to provide a little bit of action. Uh, it's irrelevant. I didn't need to show you that. So, if I hit this, it scrolls through these five different samples. So I've got my one kick triggers a, a row of different samples. And it's the same for the percussion, hats, you'd be stunned to know it's the same for the snares too. Amazing. Now they're all relatively similar. They've got kind of a clap or a snap underneath them. That's a bit more reverb tail on it. It's a bit drier. And that one's got a bit of like a tambourine underneath it. But you know, a little bit of variety. So when it plays through, this one bar has the probability of triggering. So if, so if there's three kicks here, then it'll go kick one, kick two, kick three, kick four, kick five, kick one, kick two, kick three, kick four, and so on. And all of these are based on a similar basis. So we've got eight hi-hats and eight percussion, percussive noises, and they'll trigger the five and then carry on recycling. So we have this chance window down here. And if you collect, select the hats, for example, 
the hats are a constant, so I've got them at chance 100%. But if you select the percussion, the chance is at different levels. Now, I don't necessarily tend to draw these in, I just use a randomize. And if you can see on the hi-hats, although they're hitting 100% of the time, their velocity randomization is relatively extreme, especially that one. I obviously don't like that one very much. That one doesn't hit very regularly or very loudly. And the kicks are the same. So the kicks, absolutely constant, apart from this one at the end of the bar, which is, you can see, it's less than 50%. So coupled with the randomization, See that one, the kick triggered that time, but it didn't to the two previous, the kick at the end. It gives you the sense of, it's one bar, but it's giving you enough movement to suggest it's more than one bar. And that was the whole point. I kind of figured, if I can play about with probability and randomness enough, then maybe I can make one bar sound like a lot more than one bar when you loop it. Now, also, so that's my basic sort of drum area. Now, in addition to that, I've got this, which is a second drum rack. And again, we've got round robins. But on this one, I've got melodic elements. Now, these are from the samples from Mars, 2600 from Mars. So they're all uh, just a C note, which obviously goes back to, remember we said that we've got the drum synth kick is a C. It's muted. So that is in the same note as these. And again, they cycle through. So now if you see on this one, so we've got four instances of the 2600 hitting, and it hits 100% of the time, because that's basically the only, aside from the drum synth, that's the only melodic element in the track. So I need that to keep hitting. But I also want some variety. And because it's got different lengths, it gives me the opportunity to choke out one with the next one. So that's relatively short. That's much longer. Again, that's another long one. That one's still playing. It's very long. So if you see back on the sequence, the second really long one might be okay there, but if it triggers here, then it's gonna still be playing when the second one triggers. And I don't want that. So then that's why we've put the choke group on. I don't know why I selected that, that wasn't deliberate. Also, we've got some sounds from the Fotec uh, sampler pack. Just little textures. These are also, I believe these are also from Mars, these body effects. Again, using the round robin very heavily, this entire project is kind of over the top on round robin maybe you wouldn't use it quite this much or maybe you would i don't know chances are you do a lot more than one bar but it was kind of just to prove a point you may have noticed that's a kind of a thing a bit like with the i'm going to only use live light i tend to prove a point to nobody in particular uh, basically to me now the other thing that i've got on here is these textures and these textures hit they're very long samples and they hit once per bar and again they're all in the same choke group so when when the textures trigger, there's different things that they're hitting with there. So, what does that sound on its own? How does that sound? So that's got quite a lot of variety. Again, because this one, we've got, f I don't know how many did I put in there, eight, I think. So, oh, that's not, that's not actually right. Ha, huh, that's quite interesting. Um, this is gonna be, this is, a, this is a learning opportunity. So these have to be successive. Oh no, missed it. And that's how these all trigger. Now, the reason I'm not going through how the round robin works is because I'm going to put a link to this, which is where I got it from. 
So on the, I knew about the concept of round robins, obviously, but I didn't know how to do it in Ableton Live. So I went onto the live website, which is an amazing resource, and I found out how to do it on here. And it takes you through it very simply. So literally follow those steps, and I'll put the link on, and it's much easier to follow those than it is for me to drag stuff in and try and explain stuff and potentially do things wrong, like I did with this. See, these have to be on different notes. When you add them in, they have to be... Which is why you can't just duplicate. I couldn't duplicate that. I obviously did do. <laughs> but it didn't work. But now that it will work now. Anyway, that's quite interesting. I'm going to save that so I don't forget. So let's put them together. So we've got these melodic elements, which you've heard. I'm using the phrase melodically. Uh, melodic quite generously. And then we've got the drums. So let's put them together. I'll put a link to a rendered MIDI version of that that lasts a couple of minutes, just so you get the idea of, actually, this thing does work relatively well for a prolonged period of time, and it doesn't... I think I quite successfully managed to create a non-repetitive but still groove-based one-bar pattern using round robin. Now, there's loads more that you can do with this, and there's loads more that I'm going to do with this. And I've also got another video that I'm going to probably make in a few minutes and upload soon, which takes... It's the one that I did before this, but it takes the same approach with the randomness and probability before I started trying the round robin. And it stretches it out a bit longer, but it gives you something perhaps more melodically interesting. So maybe combining the two approaches would be a good idea. Anyway, I hope that was in some way useful. And if you've got any questions, obviously you just drop them in the bottom. If you've got any suggestions about taking this whole approach further, which is obviously something that I'm going to look to do in coming videos, then, again, just drop me a line, get in touch, and that would be much appreciated. <laughs>